Getting an ultra-rare, overpowered piece of loot in a video game is a super rewarding feeling that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. In a game like Apex Legends, there are many varieties of loot scattered around the map, from the lowest tier knockdown shield to the coveted one-shot Kraber sniper rifle. In order for these weapons to feel overpowered and provide a competitive edge, not everyone can have them. In order to offset their arguably game-breaking power, they have to be rather rare, thereby preserving the balance of the game. So how do these loot distribution systems work? This video will look at two different ways to create random loot distributions, integrate some statistic concepts, and ultimately build up a model of loot generation. So let's imagine you open up a loot box and three items come out from a massive pool of possible loot. How do we fairly select those three pieces of loot? First of all, we'll take a look at our loot pool. If you have a lot of items, it usually doesn't make sense to assign each of them a probability of being found. That's a lot of work and fine tuning, and if you have thousands of items, you can imagine it's not really a worthwhile task to spend time on. Instead, items are usually categorized into tiers of rarity, with undesirable low tier items being most common and high tier items as much rarer. In fact, the scarcity of the rare items is one of the things that does make them more valuable. The precise values of the tier probabilities, which we can call weights, is now just a matter of balance, but the important part is that the things in lower tiers have higher weights and therefore are more probable to emerge than higher tier items. Here's a mechanism for this design. Randomly select a tier based on its weighted probability, and from that tier and the pool of loot that lives in it, select a random item. You can repeat this process for each item to be distributed. So how would we code something like this? It seems pretty simple, but there are a couple of nuances in the implementation. Now we can model the weights in two different ways, either as absolute or relative. An absolute probability shows the likelihood of getting an item from a tier relative to the whole, at the cost of clarity regarding the relative likelihood of getting items between different tiers. It also requires more work when changing the weighting of any tier or the total number of tiers, but it is easier to visualize. On the other hand, a relative probability shows the likelihood of getting an item from a tier relative to an arbitrary base, but we don't know the probability against the whole. It's much easier to change and a little bit more flexible to implement due to the fact that it's not normalized, but it becomes difficult to visualize. Onto the particular implementation of both of these methods. We can implement both methods naively through a cumulative distribution function. The, way, the obvious way to do this is by using a pie chart, with each segment showing the relative weight of each tier. Math is more easily done on a line than on a circle, so imagine unrolling that pie chart. You can imagine this as a line going from 0 to 1 on the absolute method, and 0 to the sum of the weights on the relative method. Each of the tiers takes a portion of this line based on its weighting, and once we have that, we can drop a random marker somewhere along the length of this line, and based on where it lands, we'll pick the tier. There might be a more optimal way to do this, but I think this is a pretty small computation, and I don't think optimization is too important here. Regardless of which method we use, we'll have to generate a random number first, and we'll call that P. The naive solution here is to hard code this. We can create a couple of if statements for each probability range and fall through each of them, banking on the fact that the next one will execute if the previous condition is not met until we reach the correct range, and then we'll just return that tier. Uh, in this case, we can represent tiers by integers, but you can use strings like common, uncommon, and rare, or even characters like C, U, and R. This is pretty arbitrary how you designate tiers, I'm just going to use integers because that's easier for me. A better method would be to create a running total and use a for each loop, or even just a simple for loop. This method works in both the absolute and relative model. We can give this function as input a list of categories. Since our tiers are integers, we'll just give it an array of integers and a list of weights. We can use a, an array of floating point numbers. First, we'll figure out the sum of the weights just by iterating through all of them and adding them up into a variable you can call total weight, and then we'll start up the main loop. 
For each step of this for loop, we'll add the next weight to a running total that starts at zero, and check if our running total is greater than p, our random number. If it is, we'll return the category at this step and halt the execution of the program. Otherwise, we'll keep going and keep on adding each consecutive weight until we find the weight at which we exceed p. So that's all there is for this tutorial. Of course, this can become a more complex problem. Right now, we're only considering independent probabilities where the chance of getting items does not depend on any previous items received, but we can manipulate these probabilities both for good and for ill. We can create a system of dependent probabilities where if the player receives several high tier items in a row, we can reduce the probability of receiving another high tier item. And conversely, if they receive several common items, to increase the probability of getting a more valuable one in the next roll. Okay, so I hope you learned something in this tutorial. I couldn't think of something to make in Blender this week, so I'm continuing on my pivot towards game design. If you like this style where I combine some game mechanic, the mathematical structure of that mechanic, and an abstract implementation in pseudocode, let me know, and perhaps I could start a series. I'll have a post up on this on my website, which will be linked in the description in a day or two. And make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified when I release something new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.